Chama chas chame chamo and gapo, you guys. I got hat hair. I took my hat off, so. <laughs> I mean, as I brought the gum back, I know y'all complain in the comments about me chewing gum, but I've been looking extra thirsty in these videos lately. So I need this gum to read to you guys. I got gum. I got water. So. Hey, Wangapo. You said you here? Hey, Tony. Halito, Linda. All right, we're going to get into the tribe so you can see. So today, we're going to be talking about the PD. I hope you can see me. Going to be talking about the PD. Also, Ancestry just so happened to... Um, make some new uh, databases within their system. So if you're, if you're, well, if you're a member of Ancestry, or you can get the 14 day trial and try to, what I would suggest is if you're going to a trial, make a plan already on what you need to do and put in there. Um, use that 14 days every day for hours. <laughs> you know, if you have time, I will start on the weekend and do that. And search through these databases and once your 14 days is up you can cancel it but you'll still have access to the tree that you have saved and the, the information that you have in that tree and you can always come back and add stuff to it even if you don't pay for a membership which a lot of people do not know and then when you're ready you can come back and pay the $20 a month whenever you feel like it but it's gonna always be there and then other family members can access your tree if you give them that and then if they pay for it, then they can take on what you had already found. So, but like I uh, tell, told you guys before, a lot of the local libraries have access to Ancestry, the library version, which is a much better, 10 times better version anyways. And you can go to the library for free, find the information, and then they have an option that you can email the information that you find to yourself. So every document that you find, there's an option on the side that you can email it to yourself. And then once you do that, you can get home, you click it, and then you have the option to upload that information into your tree for free. Okay, that's a tip, y'all, for the free 99. So, I'm gonna get into the PD. Oh, let me go back to Ancestry and let y'all know about, I got my gum, y'all. <laughs> let y'all know about this list. What'd you say, Davida? Good cause I found some migrations with help of Damon. Oh, Damon Taylor on, on Facebook and saw my mom's father's family go from South Carolina to Georgia to Alabama. Yeah, that's probably because of the, remember I told y'all they had a lot of job and business opportunities in those places, especially when they, you know, started creating Alabama, Arkansas, all those in the Gulf Coast when they were fighting the tribes down there. So you said you have some Catawba. Yeah, the gum is back, Tony. I'm sorry. Y'all saw me the last couple of days thirsty. I couldn't read. I needed a little gum here. <laughs> this is what I do in the library. I'll have the gum or I have a mint. And keeps my mind focused or whatever. But um, this database that Ancestry just got is the North Carolina Native American Census. We know we don't like to call stuff Native Americans, but... If you're looking for, just like black, if you're looking for stuff, you're gonna have to use these terms to find certain information. So the North Carolina Native American Census selected tribes, 1894 through 1913. So this is a good list because some of these tribes, um, the people on this list probably eventually enrolled or were already enrolled at this time. Greetings, Eric. Okay, so this is a new one that they just put up there. And maybe it could be that I haven't been on here that often, <laughs> but well, not looking at the, the search thing, just going on my own searches for individuals, but not at the database thingy. Y'all understand what the collections area. And then also they have a new U.S. schedules of special census of Indians, 1880. Okay, and it says a special census of these Native Americans, quote unquote, not taxed, quote unquote, living on reservations were taken in 1880 
and here's who was counted. So if you go there, you can find that. And you already know they have the Cherokee um, Baker's Rolls and Easter Band and all that stuff. Let me see. Another one I wanted to tell you guys about. Let's see. They also have U.S. ratified treaties. Let me see. So I'm taking a minute to load. So basically, it's a list of the treaties and the people who signed the treaties. The U.S. ratified Indian treaties and chiefs from 1722 to 1869. Hey, cousin. You said you finally caught it on your lunch break. Okay, much love. Ed Chama Wengapo, Chickahominy. So this is another one. If you um, you need to search it to see if your ancestor was one of these chiefs or related to the chiefs or you know they are and you're trying to get information, they have a whole database on Ancestry.com for that. And if y'all just getting on, y'all have to watch the replay and see my little tip that I told y'all to get it for the free. Like Even if you have a membership, I mean, if I wasn't helping people genealogy, I probably wouldn't be paying the money every month and just go to the library and all that. So even some of y'all with the memberships, you might wanna, you know, if it's not in your budget. You might wanna just go to the, li if your library, I would check first, yes, do the free trial, check first with your local library and see if they do participate and if they do have an ancestry library version. Okay. And uh, what's the other database? They have one a data collections database for famous Indian chiefs and their battles, treaties, sieges, seizes, and struggles with the whites for possession of America. All right, so that's a good one to look at. And I think it was one more. Let me see. He said, Tasha, someone told me that it is a National Archives in Atlanta. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, mean, I thought you asked me about it the other day. Yeah, it's the National Archives in Atlanta. And they have National Archives in several places, but the main place or the original one is in Washington, D Washington D.C. A helpful resource while on individual family member census on Ancestry is using find other members on the bottom of the page. Exactly, exactly. Let's see, I literally stayed up late researching my family back, kind of stuck in the mid 1800s. Mid 1800s is pretty good for our genealogy. Don't be so discouraged. I mean, you can get past that, but you've, you've done really good. Don't be discouraged about that. Yeah, check out. And then they have one in Salt Lake City. They have one in Texas. Um, where else? It's somewhere in the Midwest. They have them. If you go on their website, they'll show you, like, where they are. And there's at least 10 of them. You going to go next week? Yeah, I suggest you make your... If you're going next week, use this week to get your game plan together. Because, like, just like the, like I told y'all about the Library of Congress, that energy... That basement, it has that basement energy, like suction, you know. So it's better to come prepared because when you get there, you might be overwhelmed with information. And then if you have your stuff together, you have a, a search plan for your genealogy, the people there will be able to help you or more willing to find stuff for you. Okay. Oh, you're from Tappahannock. Okay. All right, and then what is this other? Let me see, what is this other one? I already told y'all, the special schedules of census of Indians. And then some of the reservations, which a lot of us, you know, these are from the West Plains area. They have databases for certain reservations. Uh, Round Valley, Standing Rock. So that, those type of those type of um, places. Now, some of us are related to them, but I'm not, I'm not saying we aren't. I'm saying our main focus is the Eastern Woodlands, as that's where a lot of us are from and where we currently live. Okay. 
All right, and then they add, they have U.S. records related to enrollment of Eastern Cherokee by the Gullen Miller. And that's the, Mill, yeah, the Gullen Miller Rolls. And that is 1809 through 1810. I mean, 19, 1908 through 1910. I don't know how I said the completely wrong thing. All right, so this is some databases on there that you guys can use. And like I said, if you have to use that trial, you know, use that trial. All right, so let's get into the PD. Any of y'all related to the PD or do you know? I'm gonna get into the PD. And this is on nativeheritageproject.com. And I don't know why my computer's, well, maybe because I have all these tabs up. <laughs> Computer's moving extra slow today. He said, is that near Richmond, Kings and Queen County near the wrapper hand? No, King and Queen ain't near Richmond now. That's at least what an hour and a half drive. That's not really, at least, that's not really near Richmond. That's more near Fredericksburg, King and Queen. Cause Rappahannock, does Rappahannock go? Rappahannock goes through Fredericksburg. I used to live right on the Rappahannock too when I was, when I was little. I lived in Fredericksburg. Okay, PD surnames. And let's see, what is she saying on here? In Volume Eleven, Issue Two of the Rice Planter Newsletter of the Old Bethlehemu chapter of South Carolina Geneal Genealogical Society, I'm sorry. An article written by J. Mitchell Skohan. Um, Y'all know I'll be butchering these names. Um, spelled S-C-H-O-H-N. Historian of the PD Indian Nation of Beaver Creek was reprinted by permission. While I can re can't reprint the article here, I can all I can do is provide you with the list of the surnames involved in the article. All right. So this is. I don't know how I got this. Um, I don't know why I put NC on the title, <laughs> but this is South Carolina. Y'all been asking for South Carolina. I don't know why I put that on there. You say I have to deplecker the record. Well, Eric, you don't you don't coin the term deplecker. <laughs> you have to deplecker the records in Virginia. You say my grandfather was born in Marlboro County, South Carolina, and he and his brothers were called the Indian Boys. Okay. You said you from Darling, South Carolina. Yes. Yeah, so we're in, finally in South Carolina, you guys, and I do not know why. I typed NC because we've been on NC for so long on the title. You said your family's from Georgetown, uh, the Santee area, Myrtle Beach. All right, so here is the PD surnames, you guys. Let me get into this. Argo, spelled A-R-G-O-E, bears, like a bear, a yoga to bear, bird, like a bird in the sky, Bonner, Bowen, Brave Boy, Bunch, Carpenter, like a construction carpenter, Chandler, like Chandler and Friends. <laughs> These comparisons are so weird. Chavers, Chavis, the infamous Chavis family, Collins, Commons, spelled C O M M I N S, Carter. James, like LeBron James, Clark, Cook, Diaz, spelled D-E-A-S, and I know um, Damon Taylor, he's related to D the Diaz, and he does a lot of extensive research on them, um, so if you're on Facebook, check out some of his posts. He said Brave Boys on a lot of lists. Yeah, Brave, they, they were um, from Virginia originally. <laughs> Now with them, they married Caucasian, some of them married Caucasian women and they moved down to the Carolinas. Like I was telling y'all about in a North Carolina thing. Fitz, spelled F-I-T-T-S, Golfin, 
spelled A, I mean G A L P H I N, spelled kind of weird. George, like Devin George, Gibson, like um, Mel Gibson, grooms, like a bride and a groom. He said, Darling is PD area. Okay. Hall, like Aaron Hall, Hamilton, Huffman, Hunt, Hutto, spelled H U T T O, Jones, Jackson, like Michael Jackson, Johnson. So the John, you see the Johnsons came down through Virginia to North Carolina to South Carolina now. Lowry. Now the Lowrys are related to the um oops, sorry, that was my chair. The Lumby as well. Like Mike Lowry. Y'all see bad boys? I haven't seen the new bad boys yet. Like Mike Lowry. Uh Marbury, like Stefan Marbury. Uh Nagin. Spell N A G I N. Newness. N E W N E S S Owens, like uh, Jesse Owens, Oxidine, spell O X E N D I N E, Quick, like DJ Quick. <laughs> All right, why, why these examples? Let me chill on these examples. Read, like you read a book. Read, R E E D, as well. It's on the list, it's two different reads. Reynolds, Rose, like a rose, like a Cherokee rose, uh, Ruse, R-O-U-S-E, Scott, a couple of y'all asked me about Scott, Scott is on this list for PD, Smith is on this list as well, a couple of y'all asked about Smith, Soley, spell S-O-L-L-E-Y, Sweat, like you sweat, Thompson, T O. M P S O N West like Delante West Whitlock Williams Wise and Wooten W O O T O N All right So that is uh, this list from this document of the PD uh, surnames and the document is called the old Bartholomew, Bartholomew chapter of the South Carolina Genealogical Society. So like I told y'all uh, the other day, was that yesterday? If you contact these genealogical societies or these historical societies, sometimes they have documents like this that will give you some clues or information. So if you have all this stuff uh, organized of the information that you do know before you start your journey or in the process or if you had already started the process of your journey and you have that stuff organized that's why it's very important i might do a video on how to organize your genealogy um, information then it's easier to contact these places and get information out of them and um you know some a lot of times like i said they're willing to help you a lot of the people are volunteers they're bored they they love this you know they love genealogy or history and they love to help people all right, so that is the PD surnames. Let's see. I thought the list was going to be a little longer. Um, what they have? Oh, she has put some pretty good stuff on her page. So this is Native Heritage Project. A lot of people use this website to um, help them with their genealogy, and it has helped them. Do you have questions? Anybody have any questions right now? And I'm gonna to try to move on to another tribe. All right, this one is gonna be the Catawba. A couple of y'all talked about Catawba. I haven't done the walk and wild yet. Not yet. Moreland, I'm not sure. Exactly. You said I lived in Florence, South Carolina for a couple of years. Yeah, I know you're Smith, but somebody else, a couple other people had asked me about the Smith. 
Smiths. So you see them on the PD. Now, if you, now just because your surname is Smith does not necessarily mean you're related to the PDs. If your people were in that area, that's when you will consider that. Now, if your people would never step foot in South Carolina, then I, I highly doubt that you are a PD. All right, surnames associated with the Catawba. And this is Vance Hoggins, Hawkins, I'm sorry, Log on blogspot.com. If you Google that, you'll be able to find Vance. Um, but this information was taken from the annual report of 1948. Uh, surnames associated with the Eastern Siouan peoples. Okay, and he says 1948 was before the state recognition process had become, begun. Some of these groups are now state recognized and some aren't. Many groups were known by different names in 1948 and some that are state recognized today are not even mentioned in 1948. Although this article mentions the Catawba, they do not list any Catawba surnames, huh? It does list surnames of some of the bands associated with the Catawba. And I have other sources for the surnames they neglected to mention in that 1948 Smithsonian document. Okay. So, let me get down to the list. Kind of odd that he would say that. Some of the groups that are listed as Siouan speakers, Catawban, Catawban, may have been instead Tuscarora in the northern or, or north, in the north or Cherokee or Creek in the south. The Yamasee, Westo, Natche, Natche, Apalachee, and others vanished from history. But it is known some survivors of many groups survived. And the blood might also reside in many of these people. Many of the tribes that disappeared were made into slaves and their blood too might reside in some of the tri-racial peoples found amongst most of these groups. So you know where he's talking about. He's talking about the Negroes, <laughs> basically. X-chromosomal DNA test results might tell us a little about our lost ancestors as well. We might be able to prove a triracial ancestry, but this leave us, I think he means leaves us, hey, peace. This leaves us with more questions than answers. No, not really. Y'all trying to confuse people. We know what we're talking about. Right, so basically he's just told us here that the so-called black folks have the blood of these people now. Yeah, wow, that's exactly what he said. Saying that these tribes, the Yamasee, the Westos, the Natchez, the Appalachians, and others who vanished from history are now were made into slaves and are now in the blood of the so-called black folks. That's basically what he said. Okay, so let's get into this a little more. He's just talking about the history. Where is the list? The list. Yeah, that's messed up. Papers genocide after slavery. That's exactly what it is. Okay, so it says Catawas. The remnant, remnants of this tribe are located at a small settlement in the banks of the Catawba River in York County about nine miles east of Rock Hill. I think somebody was mentioning Rock Hill the other day too in the comments. The country seat. The settlement is about one square mile in area or 630 acres. In 1930 census uh, returned 158 Indians in York County. Their blood seems to be mostly of a mixture of white and Indian. Although they are directly under the laws of South Carolina, they maintain a semblance of tribal government. Electing a chief every four years, conditions 
may have been unsatisfactory with respect to economic and social matters, the state has annually appropriated a sum of money to support the local school, but there are no local social agencies to assist the Catapuas. These Indians cut and haul wood and are employed as day laborers. The women often take clay pottery and make clay pottery and pipes. Federal assistance has been given to these Indians in recent years. Okay, so here are the surnames. It says surnames, although no Catawban surnames are listed, I have other sources. I don't know what sense that makes. <laughs> Why would he put these names under there? But these are Indian people in the area. I'm not sure, that's what he's saying. He does not know the exact tribal affiliation, but he's not wording it correctly. So blue is the surname, brown. Canty, I know a couple of y'all was asking about the Browns in South Carolina, so you see the Browns one here. Canty, C-A-N-T-Y. Clinton, Cook, Gordon, Harris, Hart, like the heart in your chest. Joe, this is a surname. Keg, C-E-G-G. -G -G. I mean K-E-G-G, -G. why am I saying C? I'm mixing C and K. Kennedy. Morrison, Mersh, M-U-R-S-H, Nettles, N-E-T-T-L-E-S, Owl, like an owl and the bird, Patterson, it's one of my surnames, Sanders, Stevens, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S, Oh, how are you? No, you're fine. You're fine, Sheila. You're fine. Where are we? We're doing, um, we just did the PD tribe. We're doing basically the South Carolina tribes. And now we're doing the Catawba and Croatans and others with North Carolina, South Carolina area. So y'all know all these Carolinas are connected. We were connected then. So we did Stevens, Wahoo, or Screech Owl. So I guess Wahoo means Screech Owl in Suen, spelled W-A-H-O-O. -O. So it's like Yahoo with a W, spelled Yahoo with a W. And Williams is on here. All right. And then it says Mer Merle H. Wright mentions some of these, plus a few others. Scott, Redhead, and Ayers. Okay, Chief, oh, Chief Wahoo. So that is now a surname. Wahoo, the Cleveland Indians baseball mascot. Yeah, did you see the old picture of the um, the boy who was the original mascot? It was a dark-skinned boy. A little dark-skinned boy with a fade, and he had a little bow and arrow. Yeah, they had the pictures all over Instagram and stuff of them. He said, you have a crush on a black Cherokee now. Who is that? You said a little nigra. <laughs> a little knacker. A naker. <laughs> a little naker. All right. Croatans, North Carolina. It said South Carolina counties, Marlboro. Somebody was just asking about Marlboro. Dilton, Dillington. What's it called? Dillon. I'm sorry. Y'all know I'll be messing these names up. So Dillon. Marion. Corey, along northeastern borders of the state, North Carolina counties that are found in the greatest concentration in Robeson County, but occur in considerable numbers in nearby counties of Bladen, Columbus, Cumberland, Harnett, Sampson, and Scotland. So they're talking about where the Croatans, or the Lum now the Lumbees, live. And Croatan were, the Croatans were a subtribe of the powers of the nation, they're basically Pramoki people that moved down to North Carolina. You said Miss Nover Black Seminoles. I'm missing something in chat. It's a Catabra or King Hagler remnants, and they used to have more land, but sold much, much of it off. Yeah, I believe that. All right, and it says the Suens are Croatans 
I don't know why they're connecting those together. Maybe because they intermarried with the Suens. Um, this group is estimated to number upwards to 16,000 persons. You're talking about back in the day. And is thought to be increasing with great rap raptivity than other whites or than either whites or Negroes. Okay. Physical measurements indicate the presence of Indian, white, and Negro types, whatever that's supposed to mean. Here it is said to be a tendency for the lighter individuals and families to hold aloof from the darker ones. We know that for some people it's true. Just as in the case of the Nanticokes and the Narragansett. Okay. So, originally dwellers in the swamplands of the Lumbee River, they have become successful tenant farmers cultivating cotton, tobacco, and corn. Peace, Dr. Sevy. I mean, peace, Chief Sevy. <laughs> I said Dr. Sevy. Chief and Sevy, I'm sorry for butchering your name. I've been butchering names a lot. I apologize. Okay, originally the dwellers in the swamps of the Lumbee River, they have become successful tenant farmers cultivating cotton, tobacco, corn. The state has recognized their special status and they are endowed with a separate school system for both from both whites and Negroes. They have their own churches. Intermarriage with either Negroes or whites is forbidden by law and custom. Okay, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. All right, so here are the surnames back then of the Lumbee. Allen, Bennett, Barry, Bridger, Brooks, Brown, Butler, Chapman, Chavis, Coleman, Cooper, Cumbo, Dare, D-A-R-E, Graham, Harris, Harvey, like Steve Harvey, but spelled H-A-R-V-I-E, How, spelled H-O-W-E, and we know How is a greeting and suing. You know how back in the day, the cartoons, they used to be like, How. How means hello. It's a greeting in suing language. Johnson, so we see Johnson on this list again. Jones. Lassie, spelled L-A-S-I-E. Yeah, they're separating us from ourselves. It's really... Yeah. Little, Locklear, Lowry, like I said, Mike Lowry, Lucas, Martin, Oxidine, Payne, like Martin Payne. <laughs> I haven't been watching Martin in a long time. Um, Patterson, like I said, I'm a Patterson just found out recently. So that's another thing. So my grandfather, um, they were saying that my grandfather's real father was some, was his stepfather for a long time. And then I recently found out that his real father is a Patterson and he took on, his mother took on her no, he took on his mother's surname. So he has his mother's surname instead of his father's surname. And then she went and married somebody else. And I think all the other siblings have, he's the oldest, so all the other siblings have the stepfather name. And I think they were trying to act like that was his father. But he knew who his real father was. He just wasn't in his life like that. And when he before he died, his last document, he put his real father's name on it. So, and his real father happens to be from North Carolina. All right. So now I've been researching. I see it's associated with the Lumbee. Okay. Powell. Revel. Spelled R-E-V-E-L-S. Sampson. Scott. Smith. Stevens. Taylor. Vickers, and I think we went over some of these names before in the other Lumbee list, or the first North Carolina video. White, Willis, Williamson, 
Wood and Wright, spelled with W. It's at Powell's when you your surnames. Hey. Hey, how you guys doing? Sorry. You said the Lowry Gang. Yep, the Lowry Gang, they beat up the clan. The Lumbies from the Lowry family. They beat up the clan, y'all. Shot at them and everything. They weren't scared. I said Powell's one of yours, too. <laughs> y'all been steady laughing at me. <laughs> I'm trying to be, trying to have fun with this, you guys. And some of this stuff is heavy. You know. These surnames are Black English or Indian. Well, these are associated with the tribe, and originally a lot of them were from the melanated and indi or indigenous people of Europe. All right, peace, Eric. So the names might originate with them, but like I was explaining yesterday and the day before, because I keep having people come on here trolling me about it, and I'm not saying you're not, I know you're not doing that, but people adopted a straw man surname when they did business. And I used the example of John Squires, who was the chief of the Matter Musket. So he created that surname so he can be able to sign treaties and do business with the Europeans, okay? But then he had his own Indian name. The same with um, the Nottaway chief, um, Edith Turner. Her name, I can't pronounce it right, but it's like Bora Craw. That was like her real name. But when she did business, she did it as Edith Turner. And that's what she signed when she signed the treaties and things as Edith. And then she passed on that Turner surname as well. And which we, which we don't realize in a lot in our genealogy, excuse me, in our genealogy, sometimes the women would pass down their surname to the children. Just like I said, my grandfather got his surname from his mother because I guess his father was not in the picture and maybe his father didn't want to claim him. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out the situation with that because like I said, I had to backtrack my genealogy because I had it, I had it wrong because that wasn't his real father, so... He said, your Aunt Goose still alive, says White, came and took Hopkins' name from us. Probably. I don't even, I never heard of no Caucasian people with Hopkins. I mean, but a few of them. Either they took it or they're mixed, right? Just like the Washington surname, that's a whole mystery, right? I know how many European Washingtons do you know besides George Washington? Not many. I don't, not any for me. I don't know any. All right, so today it says these people are called Lumbi Indians. All right, and then the Pat, and they were originally discovered living in the old homelands of the Chira and the Pedi Indians. So the Chira and the Pedi uh, used to live up north in northern North Carolina. And they were pushed down into South Carolina. Now, some of the Chiroc either came back or some of them stayed and intermarried with the Lumbee. And I'm assuming the PD has done the same thing. All right? And they were once called Cherokee, Croatan, Siouan, and today they're called Lumbee Indians. All right? So you see they have three different names previously from three different language or ethnic groups. The, the Cherokee are from the Iroquois group, Croatan are from um, the Algonquin or Powhatan group, and the Siouan are the Siouan people, uh, like the Siouan Lakota, the, the Blackfoot Siouans, and the Chura. So it's basically they're a mixture of these different groups. It depends on the person, depends on their genealogy. All right. So, and also Tuscarora as well, it says. It says, however, some families claim a Tuscarora heritage. So, uh, we're not going to get too much into the history, even though I would love to. It's almost 3 o'clock, so I'm trying to give two surnames. All right, now we're going into the brass ankles of South Carolina. So, the people who call themselves Lumbee came down into South Carolina and intermarried with the PD. Yeah, but the PD and the Chura are originally from North Carolina. 
they were pushed down into South Carolina later. All right, so those people that are calling themselves Lumbee, like you said, calling themselves Lumbee, they probably were of that heritage already. You said, did she say the word of the day? You said you are PD? Okay. So brass ankles, the counties in which they lived was Charleston, Collect, what's it, Colleton, Y'all know if you messing his name up. C-O-L-L-E-T-O-N, Dorchester, Berkeley, Orangeburg, and Clarendon. Coastal and adjacent areas of the state as well. Okay. Surnames, Boone, Brave Boy, Bunch, Chavis, Sorrell, uh, spelled... C-R-I-E-L. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct. Driggers, Goins, Harmon, Russell, Salmons, spelled S-A-M-M-O-N-S, -M -M Scott, Savis, it's a Savis, it's not Chavis, it's a Savis with an S. Savis with an S. Sweat and Williams. He says other names are not listed, Bra Bray Boy, which is the same family as Brave Boy or Bradby. So you live in Berkeley, South Carolina. <laughs> Who's a black mom? I'm confused. Somebody said black mom. I know that's where they were. I don't know what you're talking about. And... Okay, so <laughs> I don't know what's all, what y'all talking about right now. You said those are Sapani surnames too. Chavis is one of the names that crossed many tribes. Yeah, you see them Chavis boys is getting around or girls or whatever. <laughs> they were getting around. And like so you said, Sapani, um, a lot of those people migrated down, right? A lot of these people intermarried and migrated around. So some of us are from the same bloodlines of different tribes, if that makes sense. Okay. They have been Congaree. Yeah, as you notice with the um, Lumbee, certain people took that Cherokee name to do these treaties and be under certain treaties to do business. Like I said, the straw, name, straw man names, just like with the Oops, I'm sorry, I'm messing with my hair. Just like with the surnames, um, some of the tribes went under straw man names, like Cherokee. We know that's not their original name. It's Kitawa or Anawaiya, but they chose uh, Cherokee. Well, Cherokee is one of the original names too, but they all used that one to do business under it. Under it. All right, so tribal people along the Virginia and North Carolina border usually associated with the Sapani. So we're getting into the Sapani now. Cubans, North Carolina and Virginia. In Northwestern Person County in the Virginia border, or on the Virginia border, is located a group called Cubans who number about 400 persons. They also occur just across the state line at Halifax County, Virginia. Anne Christie, and I think they meant North Carolina. Anne Christie and Anne Virgilia, uh, I think somebody just spelled it bad, in Virginia. <laughs> the chief family names are Coleman, Epps, somebody was just asking my Epps, Martin, Shepard, one of y'all asked me about Shepard, Stuart and Tally. The name of North Carolina maintains, I mean, the, the state of North Carolina maintains an Indian school. You said, why we stop being Indian? You got to ask your grandmas that. There's a lot of paper genocide with that, of why we stopped. And plus the laws as well. We couldn't practice our religion or our language, or there'll be penalty of death in certain places. 
Yeah, basically because the Europeans instilled a lot of law and fear in the people. And then, of course, when people get into religion, too, get into Christianity and things like that, that it kind of demonized their, uh, their spirituality, their indigenous spirituality. So people gave it away. I'm not saying that that's what it does. I'm saying some, sometimes it was demonized at that time. I'm not saying that's what they do now. Okay, so the surnames again for the Sapani called Cubans was Coleman, Epps, Martin, Shepard, Stewart, and Tally. I know we all know so-called black people with these surnames from these places, as from the same places. The state of North Carolina maintains an Indian school for these people near High Plains. Near the school, the Cubans maintain their own Baptist church. They also maintain their own social lodge. Marriage with either whites or Negroes is usually on the part of these people. Is unusual. These person counting Indians may be descendants of a small band of Sapani Indians who, according to an early census report, inhabited Granville County, North Carolina, which person county was later set, set off from. All right. The Machapunga, North Carolina. I'm not going to read too much into their history because we don't have that much time. But the surnames are Barry, Daniels, Pug, and Westcott. Westcott. At the Zapani last the reservation and Fort Christiana, they scattered in several directions. Many remain on the North Carolina, Virginia. Uh, border and still remain there to this day there is I'm sorry if I'm stopping like this is because I'm editing <laughs> what I'm reading in my head because it hasn't been edited and it drives me crazy um, there is a map I found online and it shows where many of these people are now and many are in state recognized tribes in 1948 document only showed two groups but there are others living in the same general area Okay, I'm about to show y'all this. Let's show y'all this map. Hold on. Okay, so y'all can see the map. So you see the Sapani. This is Persons County. Okanichi Sapani, Virginia. Sapani on Colonel Canton's land. Or Granville County, Iowa Sapani, the state recognized Portuguese County or community. I'm sorry, which um, I told y'all before, the Portuguese in this area, the quote unquote said, <coughs> were the uh, Phoenicians who were here before the Europeans got here. But that's a whole nother story with that. And this is Fort Christiana. Now, Fort Christiana Sapani Reservation, as some of y'all know, these people, along with the people here and here and here, the, the Nottaway were involved in the Nat Turner uh, insurrection or rebellion. Fort Christiana had people to come over there and help them in Southampton. And they helped kill the people as well, but they were not punished for some reason, I don't know. But you, I'll say the nod right, right here, All right? So these people, these two groups help protect Nat Turner and all the enslaved people or indentured people um, when they were rebelling. And a lot of uh, poor, poor whites, as they call them, was involved in that as well. And they were kind of fed up with the behavior of some of the uh, plantation owners and business owners in Southampton. They're very prejudiced. They weren't paying folks that were supposed to get paid, like the free people who were supposed to get paid. And they were treating, treating the enslaved people bad. So y'all can look up all the information about Fort Christiana. And I believe there's an old video where um, Norris Francis Branham, he talks about what happened to Fort, Fort Christiana, if y'all want to look for that video. And here's the Meharan. So the Meharan 
were originally in Virginia as well. So a lot of these groups you can see that got pushed down. Here's the Tuscarora Indian Woods Reservation that we keep hearing on these videos. And you can see he has here, yeah, the real story. They don't talk about the people, uh, the Indians helping with this rebellion. And the reason for that is Nat Turner was part Nottaway and part Cherokee. Okay. His father was a was a Nottaway, his mother was a Cherokee. And here these are the these are the colors that's on the map here. Showing that. So you see you can't find what? NT pick anywhere. Um, Nat Turner, there's a whole controversy with that. There's one picture that remotely looks like what he really looked like, but it's not the one that they show a lot. The one they show a lot is actually Frederick Douglass. And another uh, model of who they keep saying is, um, what's his name? I forget what they call what the other guy's name is at, off the top of my head. But there's only one picture that looks closely like him. So he was described as um yellow complexion but not a mulatto and short so he probably looked more like ti than if anybody he said look up in nance and tigo try then went to virginia yes uh kiowa i did a whole video on that about two years ago or a year ago i'm not sure i did a post about it two years ago and i did a video about it about a year ago and miss anita wills the author she also talks about it in her book along the Rappahannock River, if y'all want to get that. And she did, she did a great job a lot of these tribes, too. Okay, so let me flip this back around. Okay. So y'all see there's a lot of stuff hidden, and they don't, they don't want us to know this information. They especially don't want us to do our genealogy to see we're related to these tribes. So when they don't want us to do something, we, we do the opposite, right? It does not hurt nobody for us to do our genealogy. So I don't understand what they're so angry about. All right, it says, Forrest Hazel lists several more surnames associated with the Indian people living in North Carolina and on the North Carolina-Virginia border. Okay, here are some more surnames, you guys. Whitmore, Watkins, you said you can't find them in Antigua. Do you mind dropping the link to where that map is? Um, it's on vancehawkins.blogspot.com. So Vance, this is his blog, and he's listing stuff from these books and these documents that he found. Okay. And here's the list he said that he got from this woman, uh, uh, this man, Hazel, uh, Forrest Hazel. And these are the known Indian families living in North Carolina and Virginia border at the time. Whitmore, Watkins, Jeffries, Guy, uh, Burnett, spelled B-U-R-N-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, Stewart, Bunch, Gibson, Collins, Corn, like corn you eat. Jones, like Grace Jones. Hathith Cock, spelled H-A-I-T-H-C-O-O-K. You say your ancestor William Chavis owns a lot of land. 57,000 acres, wow. Yeah, Chavis, they, they were a known Indian family. All right, corn, like the corn you eat. I said Jones, Hathcock. Turner, like we just spoke about, Edith Turner and Nat Turner, who are both uh, Nottaway. Wilson, Goins, Hickman, and I'm a Turner as well, too. I'm a Turner and a Jones on this list. Hickman, I think um, some people were asking me about this one. I also had a client with the Hickman surname. And she was looking for the connection, but it doesn't tell me what tribe these people are from. Harris, right? Like T.I. Harris, T. 
Kit Paris, wherever his real name is. Uh, Richardson. Uh, what is this? Kimons. Kimons. I'll, I'll spell it. K I M M O N S. Bowden, White, and Allen. Allen, like Ray Allen. Yes, that's that's how you spell it, Sheba. All right, people associated with the Melungeon. As some of y'all don't know who the Melungeons are. They are descended from those Portuguese that like I told y'all about, the, the Phoenicians, um, and different tribes and Caucasians. So they're like a, what they call it, tri-racial isolate, whatever they call these groups. It says, in counties located in the extreme western corner of Virginia are found scattered groups of mixed bloods called the Melungeons or the Vramps. These people roam the mountain regions of Virginia, southwestern West Virginia, um, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And they have recently been shown to be Sapani. So they have a Sapani ancestry. Uh, the Virginia Melunges are found in the mountain ridges, such as Copper Ridge, Clinch, Clinch I mean, Sink. No, I said it right. Clinch Ridge and Powell Valley in Lee and Scott counties, in the vicinity of Coburn, oops, I clicked the wrong button, hold on y'all, I'm sorry, I clicked the button, in the vicinity of Coburn and Norton in Wise County, near Damascus in Washington County, and in the western dismal area of Giles County. No estimate of their numbers are available, but they probably amount to several thousand. They show dark skins with straight or curly black hair, high cheek cheekbones. Formerly, they lived by raising little corn, hunting, fishing, digging roots, gathering herbs, and doing odd jobs for their neighbors. In recent years, they have taken to mining and cultivation in the better areas of the bottomlands. And Reese and yeah, okay, I already read that. The chief family names of the Melungeons in this area is Bolin, Bolin, B O L E N, Collins, Gibson, Freeman, Goins, and Sexton. All right, here's some more surnames Bolin, Collins, Denham, D E N H A M, Fields. I have Fields surname. Freeman, Gannon, Gibson, Goins, Gorbanes, or Vins, so G O R V E N S, Graham, Lawson, Maloney, M A L O N E Y, Mullins, like Chris Mullins, Noel, Pinior. P I N I O R E, Sexton and Bright. Let's see what y'all are saying. Harris, yeah, Harris crossed a couple of tribes. So they were like Tuscarora, Sapani, a couple of people. Harris has showed up in almost every list, pretty much. Looks like brown. He said, we have a lot of them lunching in Ohio. He said, your mom was a Harris. Yeah, they must have migrated or something. Okay, now my damn, excuse me. Now my browser is freezing up. All right, so it says, Lewis Jarvis article as transcribed by William Gro Grossi. So, it don't matter what his name is. Historian of Hancock County, Tennessee, from the Hancock County Times, Sneedville, Tennessee, 17 April, 1903. In his article, Jarvis mentions the following Melungeon surnames. Collins, Gibson, Bunch, Goodman, Bolin, Coco, others not mentioned, Moore, Williams, and Sullivan. All right. He said you heard the mention Hal surname. Yes, Hal was mentioned. 
So the thing with the Melungeons is, what people don't know, um, some of them were Muslim as well, and that's how they were, um, what do you call uh, I don't know what you call it. Signif did I say signified? Not signified, how they were, um, I can't think of the word now. But how they were spotted, some of them, because they were prey on the rugs and all this other stuff. And that's what made them weird. And plus, they were darker, right? Some of them were mixed as well already. But they came from the Spanish Inquisition when they were trying to get rid of the Moors in Europe, right? So that's why they're called Portuguese, because some of them live in Portugal, some of them live in Spain and different places, right? And they knew how to speak Portuguese. All right. Mag County, I'm sorry, you guys. We're in calls. Magafin County, Kentucky. Some 234 Indians were recorded for Kentucky in 1910. I don't know how we got all the way to Kentucky, you guys, in Tennessee. All right. It says in southern Kentucky on the Tennessee border is the Co Clan, C O E. A mixed group of part Indian descent, these people live on Pea Ridge along the Cumberland River, an area bound partly by that river on the southwest, by Kittle Creek on the east and Gudio Creek on the north. All right. They also live in Breathitt, Floyd, Lawrence, and Johnson counties in eastern Kentucky. Here are the surnames. Sizemore. Mullins, Perkins, and Cole. So we're seeing Cole on, and Mullins on here several times, right? All right. And Ohio. Some of y'all asked about Ohio. These are called the Carmel Indians. There were 435 Indians in Ohio in 1930. 6% pure blood, allegedly, and 20.9% mixed and 73.1% not recorded, according to the census. Yeah, the pyramids are found in Kentucky, right? These returns show their presence mainly in the cities of the states, as in Cleveland, Cayuga County, Columbus, Franklin County, Cincinnati, Cincinnati Hamilton County, Toledo, Lucas County, and Akron, Summit County. Y'all know LeBron James from Akron. There were also a few Indians in rural Hardin County who may represent a survival from early times. A few refugees in the Scotioto, wait, Sco, Sco, yeah, Scotioto marshes and settlement at Carmel. There are a number of mixed blood groups of part Indian descent in Ohio who are not recorded in the census. Okay. And here are some of, let me just give you all the surnames. The family surnames are Nichols, Gibson, and Perkins. And some of y'all know one of my surnames is Gibson. Yeah, it would look like pyramids, Deshaun. It looked like pyramids in Kentucky. <laughs> He's saying a bone box. <laughs> Yeah, so these were called the, the Caramel Indians, all right? So here are some more surnames from that area. A source listed below are the following surnames online. Uh, Decor family members, I mean, family names. Barnett, Chavis, Chavers or Shavers, that's all the same family. Coker or Croker, Cradledolph, Spelled C R A D D O L P H, Dungey, Harris, How, or Howell, Long, Marsh, McKeel, Keel, or Keels, Scott, and Stewart. Yeah, they were every, they were everywhere. I'm really itching, you guys. Um, I'm reading this, this, these are documents that someone on their blog pulled up for these Indians in these areas, okay? The blog is vancehawkins.blogspot.com if you want to see it. 
and he's just done a lot of research on the Indian surnames. Okay, Kaur meaning most prominent and frequent, frequent surnames in Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan area. So those names that I just mentioned were the prominent Indian names in that area. It's Burnett, Chavis, Choker, Cradle, Cradle, Cradolph, I'm sorry, Dungey, Harris, Howell, Long, Marsh, McKeel, Scott, and Stewart. Here are the extended family names from those areas. He said you gotta look it up. Now, I don't know what's going on with my page. It keeps going down. I did not want... Now it's freezing. Let me read what you guys are talking about. Serpent Mound is here in Ohio. Okay, cool. All right, here are the extended family names. I'm gonna read it before I mess up again. Allen, Anderson, Archer, Artis, Ayers, Bass, Beverly, Bowling, Branham, Bray, Brown, Bunch, Bird, Canada, or Kennedy. Uh, Canada is another spin from that one too, because that is a Algonquin word. Canada is an Algonquin word. Cold like J. Cole, Collins, Corn, Cousins, Croston, C-R-O-S-T-O-N, Dalton, Dorton, Day, Dempsey, like Jack Dempsey, Dixon, Evans, Epps, uh, Gallimore, and you can notice these same names are in uh, Virginia and North Carolina because these people migrated as well. Um, Gall, Gall, it says Golly Moore associated with peppers, like Julius Peppers. Gar, Garland, like Judy Garland. Gibson, Goins, or Goin, or Goins. That's the same surname. Griffin, like Eddie Griffin. Guy, Haddithcock, Hart, Haskins, Hawk, Hawkins. Haley, Hedge, Peth, spelled H-E-D-G-E-P-E-T-H. Henson, like Taraji P. Henson, Holly, Huge, Huge, I'm sorry, James, like LeBron James, Jeffries, Johnson, Jones, Keaton, Kersey, like Jackie Joyner Kersey, Liggins, Locklear, like Heather Locklear, she's part Lumby. Lucas, Lynch, Martin, Mason, Matthews, male, spelled three different ways. You can spell male like the male gender, M-A-Y-L-E or male. Hello? Yes, I keep getting phone calls. I'm trying to hurry up and get rid of this list. I mean, go through this list. Mayo, McDaniel, McKinney, Miner, Moss, Newman, Nichols, Norman, Norris, Oxidine, Parker, Perkins, Pettiford, Penn, spelled P E N or P-I-N, which is the same family, Pompey, Powell, Rag Raglan, spelled R-A-G-L-A-N, Redman, Rickman, Richardson, Robbins, Robinson, like David Robinson, Saunders, Sanders, Sexton, Shepard, Shoemake, spelled S-H-U-M-A-K, Simmons, like Russell Simmons, Sizemore, Spears, Stills, Tayborn, Tan, like you getting a tan, Thatcher. Tyler, up the grows spelled U P 
spelled U P T H E G R O V. Valentine, like Bobby Valentine or Val Valentino, or whatever. Uh, Vaughn, V U V A U G H N. Vinely, V I N E Y. Watkins, Watson, Wit, and Winborn. Okay. So those are all known families in the areas of Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan. And you can see some of the surnames have migrated, Peace Kwan, have migrated from over there to over there. Or it could have been they came from the Ohio Valley to the East Coast. We don't know. He said, Oxidine, the only time heard. That is star running back at Virginia Tech in the 1990s. Yeah, I remember that. Y'all see, I know my sports. I've been naming all these athletes. I don't really watch it much now, but back in the day, yeah, 90s, I did watch in 2000s, early 2000s. All right, the Guineas of West Virginia. Let me hurry up because I got to get off at around 3.30, two minutes. So I'm going to just hurry up and go through. Let's see, um, it's the people of Indian ancestry. In West Virginia, these guineas, whose numbers range from 6,000 to 7,000. They're in West Virginia and parts of Western Maryland, and also in cities in Eastern and Northern Ohio, like Zanesville and in Detroit. I guess they moved to Detroit. The guineas present a usual variety of found in mixed bloods, but the white and Indian seems to be most prominent, and they were segregated and classified as colored. So these are the following family names. Adams, Collins, Croston, Dalton or Dorton, Kennedy, male, like the gender, or male with the Y, M-A-Y-L-E, Minor, like Harold Minor, Newman, Norris, and Pritchard, P-R-I-T-C-H-A-R-D. Okay. Alito. So that was West Virginia, the people of Indian ancestry there, the surnames called the Guineas. They called them the Guineas. All right, Monikins in Virginia. They're, they uh, came from Rappahannock County, Piedmont, and Blue Ridge uh, Indians, Amherst Counties, Rockbridge County. Of Halifax County on the North Virginia, I mean North Carolina border. All right, the group was around 500 to 600 mixed bloods. They claim. All right, let's get into the surnames. The chief family surnames are Adcox, spelled A D C O X, Branham, Johns, Red Cross, and Willis. Like, what you talking about, Willis? Willis, okay. And I'm trying to get some more in here real quick. The brown people are Rockbridge County, Virginia. So they're close to the Monacan people. Um, these are people of Indian blood. And here are the surnames. It says Catawban people surnames. Oh, wait a minute. He didn't list the surnames on here. But if you live in that area, it's good to look into the brown people of Rockbridge County. He didn't list the surnames, but then he goes into the Catawba servant names. In Indian Territory, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. So those y'all from Arkansas. Let me do this real quick because I got to go. Morgan LeBlanche, spelled L-E-R-B-L-A-N-C-H-E. -E. Gentry, Keg, Morrison, Redhead Heart, Ayers, Kego, LeBlanc again, and Scott. So the, some of those same names, well, all of those same names we saw in South Carolina and Carolina. All right, the heads of the families in Quilla in 1848 are the Morris family, Keg, Stevens, Hart, Scott, Ken, Kenny, Kenty, K-E-N-T-Y, George, Harris, Redhead, Ayers, Brown, and Joe. And the Catawba and Georgia were the Guy and Jeffries. 
so it's a whole lot of stuff here we're gonna have to come back come back either tomorrow or sunday or monday one of these days to guys see how i feel um and finish this list off let me do these real quick um some ochanichi sapani tried to sign up for the dawes rules or Gunnan Miller as Cherokee. And these are the Sapani Ochanichi names. Guy, Jeffries, Wilson, and Gibson. Okay, like I told you, I'm a Gibson. Um, and then some more Kentucky, Melungeon names. Who came or wanted to come to Oklahoma is Perkins, Baldwin, like, um, not Alec Baldwin, what's, what's his name? Cole, Howard, Shepard, and Fletcher. Okay, so we're going to come back, um, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the treaties, uh, the second plantation treaty, and um, the chiefs of Pawnees at Fort Christiana, and get into that. So we kind of get, and try to get more into South Carolina as well. We didn't, we got into South Carolina, but we didn't get as much because we kept coming back to North Carolina and Virginia somehow. So we're going to try to get into South Carolina much more next time, you guys. All right, thank you. No problem, cousin. How do you support a channel? Um, you can uh, cash at me if you'd like to, a dollar sign. The Tasha She, or um, at PayPal, paypal.me slash um, the Tasha She as well. Or you can just send it through my, uh, if you have PayPal, you can send it through my email, the Tasha She at gmail.com. Thank you, Sheba. I really appreciate your help. It says, Bill Jermaine, I appreciate everything that you do, and thanks for your hard, dedicated work that you do. No problem. No problem. But we're going to be back on here. Um, so y'all heard a lot of these names from the so-called African-American uh, people on here. A lot of the surnames. So that's why we have to thank you. That's why we thank you, Sheba. That's why we have to do our research. And I'm itching, you guys. I don't have any makeup on. Um, that's why we got to do our research, and that's why we have to do our genealogy. We got to know our history and the genealogy so we know who we are. There's a lot of people talking about knowledge itself when they don't even have part of their, they haven't even started on their genealogy. It's very important, you know, to do that. Okay? And you see they're trying hard for us not to do that. So that's why it makes it even, you know, more important. Okay, so, and the power to language for goodbye, we say ana, and I'll see you next time, or see you in the next video, okay? All right, so ana.